There's no artist in the classic canon who, for me, inspires such levels of admiration, affection, awe and adoration as David Bowie. Much as I marvel at the like of Louis Armstrong or Patsy Cline or Miles Davis or Jimi Hendrix, these are all artists not of my time. Their work or their best work was done before I could live amongst it, before it was part of my day-to-day -day life, before I could consume it and anticipate more. One has to be remote in one's appreciation of it. But not David Bowie. Since the moment I first started listening to the radio, he was a high peer at the table of hitmakers. In researching this, I scrabbled through my once proud collection of 45s. I still have Rebel Rebel long since dehoused from its original RCA jacket, which if memory serves was red, and Sorrow played almost to a translucence with its B-side Amsterdam probably played no more than once. I had so many more back when. I had Starman, Gene Genie, Golden Years, Young Americans. That's what he was. He was a hit machine. Then, as I grew older, he became something else. He dressed in new clothes and he put his killer pop tunes into new clothes because for all the cold pretender station, low, heroes and lodger and what they put forward, they were still basically collections of great tunes conveyed with different music. Scary Monsters was the culmination of that. Much like low and heroes, the earworms were on side A's, the deep tunes on side B, the fact that it was successful in having two very considerable hit singles, whereas the preceding albums weren't, doesn't mitigate its significance in any way. The rest of the 1980s, even though the returns were incrementally diminishing as time went by, carried on the same formula, albeit the tunes were more blatantly dressed in the swishy satin and tat of pop fripperies. The 90s saw a difficult day with the glorious failure of his world beat inspired black tie white noise and the less equivocal shortcomings of his other genre exercises in that period before finally a Bowie unencumbered by stylistic conceits or pre-imagined concepts emerged with four solid albums which valued nothing greater than what he did best. Great songwriting and imaginative arranging. Make of his final album, Black Star, what you will, his seemingly concomitant death very quickly made it impossible to view it as an artistic contribution, as opposed to some form of synecdoche, substituting for his entire legacy. Many YouTubers, braver, smarter and with keener critical faculties than me, have made excellent and well worth seeking out attempts to classify and comb through Bowie's work, looking for what is best and most worthy and what is less necessary. I can't do that. I'm not any good at those sort of exercises and I don't especially enjoy them. Besides, of Bowie's 25 studio albums, there's only one I genuinely have nothing good to say about. Perhaps five where the good mitigated the not so good and the rest, honestly, whatever objective lens I could bring to them would be insufficient to justify splitting number 15 from number 14, let alone number two from one. So I'm going to take the approach of listing them in order of how much I purely enjoy listening to them. And my context review will be the medium of badly written haiku. So fetch some cool biscuits and a plate of beverages and enjoy some 17 syllable reflection on the best friend we ever had, a man who was a gentleman and a genius and very importantly, those things in that order. David Bowie. Sometimes you just don't like what they expect you to. This I just find dull. What should you do when you conquer the world at last? Anything but this.
laughing gnome absent. Unfair. London boys the same. Useless otherwise. Time will crawl is great. Day in, day out, not so sure. File under mundane. Desperate quest for relevance ends with migraines for unwary fans. Clank, clunk, grind, Bowie's grimace inducing machine, oblique strategies. Hippie dippy vibes. This record isn't that bad. Planet Earth is blue. Love, hate, relations. Song choice good. Execution, much to be desired. There's some killer songs. Too many others take up space without purpose. Smooth, sleek and shiny. Title track, A Thing of Grace. Fame, monotonous. How is anything with Rebel Rebel any less than great yet this is? Reborn Bowie is a glorious anarchy. His rules are his own. Thirty-five years on, an artist settles into his own skin at last. Overshadowed by a dark secret, deeply divided record. Plastic never did sound so natural nor feel so warm as this does.
This is the new real. Get used to it. Craftsmanship above artifice. Can someone tell me what the heck it ain't easy is doing on this? Never mind bollocks, the rest of the world would take five years to catch up. If you're going to come at the king you best not miss, new waivers take heed. Time falls wanking to the floor, what else needs to be said, we were all mad then. Side one has hits, but Major Tom is thence consigned to Tin Can Alley. Life on Mars is his hallelujah, but the rest is nasty sweet. Don't let it be said he did not know how to rock out with the best of them. Ex-pop starlet seeks like-minded companions for sexy Euro romp. must fall to earth. Meanwhile the dance continues, expressed to Berlin.